So how old were you when you wanted to compete in mixed martial arts? Um, not necessarily I ever really thought I'd want to compete, like straight up, there was no real age. I was, growing up I wanted to be a, a professional athlete, always, it was always uh, in my family, you know, everyone just kind of regarded athletes as, you know, celebrities as opposed to, you know, actors, but my dad, you know, he really admired boxers and stuff like that too, like uh, Muhammad Ali, George Foreman, uh, Mike Tyson is prime before, you know, years were on the diet. Um, and just kind of, I started wrestling too. And finally, I didn't want to wrestle anymore. And I needed another competitive sport to do. And as much as I, you know, when I was 10 or 12, I saw a couple of the UFCs, you know, like Ultimate Ultimate 1 and 2. And guys like Don Fry and Dan Severn, I thought those guys were badass, you know, not just because they had sweet mustaches, but like their, their style, you know, wrestling background and, you know, ground and pound, that kind of stuff. I thought it was really cool. Uh, I started training with Champion Fight Club in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. That's where I'm from. And eventually it led to me training in Lloyd Minster, where I was finishing off school uh, with Travis Quinnell and Jason Sagal at Iron Circle. started training with Kyle Cardinal for my Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He's probably the best Jiu-Jitsu guy in Alberta. And uh, with the guys from Team Threat, you know, Jack Montemuro, Travis Galbraith, Luke Harris, Victor Bachman. It's, really, it's just evolved from, from then. So it seems like your father was an important factor in inspiring you maybe in the early days with his love for boxing. Um, how would the rest of your family react when you when they found out that you were going to do mixed martial arts? Uh, not impressed was probably the biggest thing. Even even my dad, you know, uh, even though he likes boxing, he doesn't necessarily. He's not a big fan of me boxing or me getting punched in the face. You know, it's the parental instinct. No one's a big fan of watching, you know, their kid get their ass kicked. Accidents happen. <laughs> There's a weird, it's a, it's a weird camaraderie between, you know, training partners, athletes, even between fighters and fighters who have fought each other. It's, it's, it's not like any other sport, really, you know. Two guys can beat the shit out of each other for 15 minutes and, you know. After, and then they hug at the end. Yeah, hug at the end and, you know, like, one of my fights, I busted the guy up pretty bad, like broke his labrum, tore his labrum in his shoulder and, uh, a couple people told me I, I broke his arm with my last the arm bar. After we went went to the bar, and then he went and got stitches. So you know you gotta be a grinder basically, and that's the kind of thing that like for good fighters you have to be able to tough it out, not necessarily be you know stupid, but you know like it's it's more about. You gotta make sacrifices, and I've come to terms with that. You know, I, you gotta make sacrifices. I'd eventually like to fight a big show in one of the, you know, the top shows in the world, and you gotta make sacrifices. Calicio Championship fighting has brought forward a lot of controversy, and this was due to the dream rules that were used in the event, right? Where do you stand on this, and the concern that dream rules would be incorporated in other events, possibly in the near future? Uh, what the president? former promoter, whatever, Alino Santoro, uh, for lack of a better term, he's a jackass. I don't really, I'm not big, I'm not really concerned with ruffling a few feathers. He did not go about it in a very good way. Uh, he's disrespectful to people who had an opinion on the matter. I think the big thing with, with the Dream Rules is not the fact that it was Dream Rules, it's the fact that it was, you know, amateur fighters basically using these Dream Rules. Uh, their best fighter, on that card was George Brito, who's an amazing jiu-jitsu guy. Amazing. Probably one of the best jiu-jitsu guys in in the world. You know, he's you know, he won the Nogi Absolute Worlds. He's an amazing guy. He's the only one who should have been allowed to use the rules in my opinion, just because he is professional, he understands the sport. Uh, you know, you got guys who 
records are four and 18, you know, guess what? They haven't learned the sport enough to use something that can be potentially dangerous, you know, because I am a fan of, of, of dream rules. I think if you combine dream rules with North American rules where you can use elbows and stuff, that's where MMA will hopefully eventually get, you know, just from a fighter's perspective. I like the dream rules. It fits into my style very well. But uh, I don't think it was gone about in the most uh, tac tactful manner. I hear that you would like to fight in Japan. What is it that attracts you to the dream or Sanguko? Uh, I think the big thing was uh, four or five years ago, there was a big event, Pride. Uh, Pride was, the, in my opinion, it was the be-all and end-all when it was in its prime. You know, that's where... Uh, lots of really good fighters were, you know, some of the top fighters were. Yeah, there are good fighters in the UFC, but the event in itself was really well run. Uh, you know, the production in it was was amazing. Uh, the rules were different, and uh, the audience was different. And I, I think what attracted me is the audience and their uh, attention to the ground game. So your next event is Friday with the Fight Club 10. Who is your opponent? Uh, my opponent is Brandon MacArthur. How, how do you think the fight will go in just from what you might have heard or seen about how he performs? Definitely see myself winning and getting loaded. So you're going to have a big round after the after the f event is over, right? Because you've been training for how long now uh, to prepare? Uh, this is four months to get ready for this fight, basically. So it's time for a, a, a release. So how exactly have you been preparing for this fight? Um, training, you know, I, I've, I've kind of moved around a lot with my training. Uh, working a lot with my boxing coach, Kevin Royal. Uh, I went down to Lloyd Minster to go train with guys at uh, MMA United Training Center. Uh, they have a couple really good wrestlers. Uh, of course, always working my jiu-jitsu with Kyle Cardinal. I went down to Vegas. Uh, for a week, and I trained at Vanderlei Silva's camp. Uh, got my ass beat up there, and just, and the guys at Hayabusa Training Center are working with lots of those guys. So. Who are you currently helping train at Hayabusa? Uh, one guy I'm training is Garrett Nabokin. Fights uh, for the MFC. He just fought. He won by rear naked choke. Got submission the night. And I've been I've been working with him for a little while. He's a guy I like training. He works hard. I went down to Lloyd Minster, helped a bunch of guys at the MMA United Training Center. Uh, Travis Quinnell, I helped him. There's a couple other guys, like all the guys that there, Brian Denniston, uh, Kelly Gervais, Greg Wells. Those are all guys from there that I helped train. But uh, I, I like training people because eventually the plan is to go from MMA when my body can't really do it anymore is to become a trainer. I would like to eventually open up my own gym, you know, that's the dream or whatever. Have my own successful gym and train fighters. You know, lots of the best guys in the sport have gone from being fighters to, to you know, Sean Tompkins, everyone knows him, uh, Pat Miletic especially, Randy Couture, all those guys are, you know, even though Randy still fights, and technically Pat Miletic still fights, but they're, they're you know, Pat Miletic and Sean Tompkins are known as trainers. That's where I'd eventually like to transition to. And the guys that you've been training have obviously been winning, so it's showing that they've got some really great support with you, and they've been sending a few shout-outs wherever I go doing interviews. I hear a little bit of Mitch Clark here and there, so that's really good to hear. We're looking forward to your next fight at the Fight Club 10, and we wish you the best, and um, we'll be keeping an eye out for you and the guys that you help train at Hayabusa Training Center. So good luck.